Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today, theory question around the polytropic process in which we need to derive an equation. Question statement reads, an ideal gas in a closed system undergoes a change of state from 1 to 2 according to the relation P pressure times volume to the n is a constant. Show that for this process T2 over T1 equals P2 over P1 to the n minus 1 over n and the T2 over T1 is V1 over V2 n minus 1. And the work done is work from 1 to 2 is integral of P dV, that's the um, definition, and then that's equal to P1 V1 P2 minus P2 V2 divided by n minus 1. Okay, so the first thing is this guy here. This is what we call a polytropic process, a process that obeys this relationship here that P times V to a um, to the power of n is a constant polytropic is a polytropic process. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that if I take pressure on state 1 multiplied by volume on state 1 to the power of n, n is only multiplying volume, okay, that needs to be equal to P2 V2 state 2 state 2 to the power of n. Okay, that n has, is the same regardless of the state uh, 3, 3 n and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, uh, smiley face times volume smiley face to the n, they all need to be the same. That's a polytropic process. And what we're trying to prove is that in the case of a polytropic process in an ideal gas, right? So the combination of ideal gas plus plus polytropic, we can use these relationships here. Okay, so you only have two things to use, so let's go ahead and use them. First one is the ideal gas relationship that says P V equals M or N R T, depending if we're using number of moles or mass. Um, and then because if I send the, the temperature dividing, I'm going to have the same equation. Pressure times volume divided by the temperature needs to be equal to the mass and constant. Right? As long as this is a closed system, and it is closed system, this will not change. The mass is not going to change, right? So therefore, P times V divided by T is a constant. So once again, what does that mean? It means that P1, V1 divided by T1 is a constant which then means P2, V2, divided by T2 is a constant, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if that's the case, I'm going to start with this relationship here, and all I'm going to do is apply the two concepts we just talked about. All I'm going to do is apply this, oops, I'm going to apply this, I'm going to leave that there, just copy it here. Here. Okay, so all I'm going to do is combine these two concepts. The concept that the combination of these guys needs to be a constant and also that this is a valid relationship for an ideal gas closed system process. Okay, so I'm going to do um, P2, I'm just going to write it bigger here, P2, all right, and remember this is valid for any um, state, it doesn't have to be 1, 2, and 3. This is valid for any state, T1 equals P2, V2, T2. And now what I'm going to do is, if this is true, this yellow part is true, if this is all equal to a constant, then I can say that my P, my pressure, any pressure, but in this case P1 if, if I want to, will be equal to the constant, constant, divided by V1 to the N. And I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in the equation. And then obviously, if this is true, then P2 is also equal to the same constant divided by V2n, right? Etc. Etc. So <clears throat> this equation here becomes um, V1 divided by T1 that multiplies the constant divided by V1 to the n. And over here, I have V2 divided by T2 multiplies the constant divided by V2 to the n. Now, on both sides I have the constant, so they can go ahead and come out of the 
uh, you can divide everything by the constant for that sake. And I'm going to go ahead and combine all the volumes that I have, have volumes over here, and I have these volumes over here. I'm going to combine them all to the same side, and all the, the temperatures I'm going to combine to the same side too. Okay, that's going to leave me with the idea that, this is too thick, the idea that T, mm, let's send, um, let me think, I'm send 2 to the top there, T2 over T1 will be equal to V2, and note that this is, um, same thing as putting the negative V on the top, and this same thing as having a 1 there, right? So if I combine these two things here, what I'm doing is V2, 1, minus N, right? Which is the same thing as V2, V2, N. This is the same as V2, 1, minus N. So here's 1 minus N, and over here, and over here I'm going to have V1, 1, minus N. Yep, so we have on both sides. Cool, and now this is pretty much what we needed to do because if they're both um, the exponent there, then this is the same thing as saying, okay, this is just V2 over V1. This is mathematically equivalent, equivalent to doing on the fraction instead of doing on each of the individual. Okay, so note that what we, what we ended up here is, okay, so therefore this is T2, divided by T1 equals V2 over V1, 1 minus N. And that's exactly what I wanted to prove, I think, T2 over T1 equals, yep, this is one of them anyways. This is this one here. All right, and if I want to um, have it for the pressures, which is the left-hand side one, well, once again, I'm just going to apply this very same concept over here. I just need to where I have um, where I have volumes. I just need to apply the pressure. Okay, so oops, I lost the T's. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead with this equation here. I'm going to say okay, so if this is true, then V two over V one equals um, P one divided by P two. And T one T two. Okay, and if this is true, what I can do now is I can send just ensure I didn't flip anything here. Flip anything. V two V one. V one V two. Ooh, okay. Got it, got it. Okay, I did I did miss one step. Yes, true. Okay, cool. I didn't do anything wrong, I just missed one step. Because if you note what this has is 1 over n, and this is v2 over v1, right? And what we have here is n minus 1. So they just literally flipped, right? So what they did here is they did um, t to the minus 1. All right, so this, if you, if you, if you flip how we explain this in an easy way. V2 over V1 is equal to V1 over V2 to the minus 1, right? So therefore, what I can do is I can flip these guys and have it to the minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to do so therefore, this is equal to T2 over T1 And I'm going to flip them, v1, v2, and then that's going to make it negative over here. So that's going to be negative n, which becomes positive n, and then negative 1 becomes just negative 1. Okay, now it is the version that we were looking for. So I apologize, I missed one step. Beautiful. Now, um, now I have this flipped to what I have there, so I'm going to flip this just to make sure. I'm not confusing anyone. Flipping the whole thing. So this is becomes P2, T1, um, P1, T2. And where I have this, I'm substituting this. Okay, so that means this becomes T2 over T1 equals P2 
T1, P1, T2, that is being multiplied. Sorry, that's the exponent of n minus 1. So what I need to do now is I need to split this up so that I can send the t's to the other side. Okay, so this is the same thing as p2. Mm, let me just leave the, the p's together and the t's together. So I'm going to leave p2, p1, n minus 1, and that multiplies t1, t2 to the n minus 1. And now what I can do is I can send this guy here I can divide everything by this. Okay, so that's going to tell me that T2 divided by T1. If I divide everything, it's the same thing as if I flip, if I were to flip this completely, right? So it's the same thing as sending to this side a T2 to the N minus 1. And over here, a T1 to the N minus 1. They're multiplying, multiplying. Uh, this in turn happens to be the same thing as having one here and one here. So what's happening is that this one is canceling the minus one, this one is canceling this minus one. So we're left the same thing as t t2 divided by t1 to the n. And on the p side of things, p side of things, nothing really changed, right? Nothing really changed. We're just keeping it that way. Okay, so this whole thing becomes, this whole thing becomes, we want to go, we want to go rightwards once again. Okay, so therefore, t2 divided by t1 to the n equals this guy here, which is, P2 divided by P1 to the N minus 1. All right, cool beans. Now, last thing to do is I need to take the root on both sides. So the square root, because it could be the root to the N on both sides to the N. Okay, and then obviously on this side here, we're going to be eliminating this N. But on this side here, I'm not. I'm just going to be multiplying. So this is going to be end up being t2 divided by t1 will be equal to p2 divided by p1 n minus 1 divided by n. And I hope, I really hope this is what we're looking for. Let's check. Yes, it matches it perfectly, right? So good job. All right, so T2 over T1 equals P2 over P1, N minus 1 divided by N. Okay, so we've done the first part anyways. So that is, this is the first relationship we need to show. This is the second relationship we need to show. All right, now, next up.